Hey guys, I've got something to show you. Um, so this isn't really going to be a tutorial video or anything like that. It's just a little sort of show and tell. Uh, this is some core magnetic core memory. And this one's from, uh, you can see it there, Plessy. What was it? Uh, Plessy. Um, so this is a 16 by 24 core memory, which is, which is, 384 bits. Uh, so let's divide that by 8. That gives us 48 bytes of memory in this. So this would have been used in old computers. Let me just get rid of the calculator. Would have been used in old computers from starting in the 1950s, maybe very late 40s, but 1950s certainly, um, up until the 80s. Because there's no date on this one. And I've tried to look it up look up these details on here, but uh, to no avail, unfortunately. But because it's only 48 bytes, it is unlikely to have been a very late one. So this would have been an early uh, computer memory store, or memory core as it's called. Um, but you can see that it was would have been sort of panel mounted, rack mounted. So there would have been lots of these. So on the back, you can see um, sort of the, the read ports and the write ports. Now, core memory is an odd one because it's a destructive memory. So once you read it, you destroy the memory that's there. So you flip the bits, essentially. Um, so this is a very simple explanation of, of what it is. So this is going to be a very simple explanation. If you want something more detailed, you have to go online and find it. Uh, but each one of those little black things in there is a ferrite core. Uh, and those cores are essentially wound in a way, I mean, they're threaded differently, but they would have been threaded by hand, actually. Uh, they're wound in a way so that you can induce a magnetic field in each one, and then with a sense wire, it would have been running off to the other ones as well, you can read what magnetic state it's in. And that would either be a zero or a one. Now, what you do here is you do feed some current in here and it would be through an AC signal or maybe a pulse and you would magnetize the core in a certain direction and then you'd be able to read that as it came out if you wanted to. But when you're writing to the memory, you could write it like this and it would jump over to the next one. Uh, and there are more components than I'm showing here. Uh, and if you wanted to, if you were going to read this memory, that's writing to the memory, that's setting it into a state. So you'd set it from uh, the zero or to the one. Once you've set it to, let's say that's a one, this, this direction here. Once you set it to a one, in order to read the memory, you would pulse it this way. Uh, and if you had a change, so if you wanted to pulse it in a certain way, so you'd pulse it with uh, that kind of configuration, if you've got nothing back on the sense wire, so if you had a low signal, then you would know that that was already a one. But if you pulsed it the other way, you would get a high signal. More current would be passed through uh, as the magnetic field or the flux flipped. But again, as I said, it's not a great explanation. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm certainly no expert, but it is pretty, isn't it? it you've got to admit, it's a very, it's a good looking technology. So I'm not going to interface with this at all. Um, I think it would be more effort than it was worth, but I really, I like it. I might put it in a frame or something and put it on the wall. It's a beautiful piece of kit. Uh, if you guys have any experience with these kind of things, if you have any idea what kind of machine this might have come out of, um, please let me know. All right, thanks.